Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to today's seminar. I'm Gwendolyn Stansbury, the director of IFPRI's Communications and Knowledge Management Division. Um, so good afternoon. <clears throat> Over the past two decades, IFPRI has done a lot of work evaluating social protection programs and has found that transfers, whether cash, food, or vouchers, can be effective at reducing poverty. But what types of transfers are most appropriate for what countries, regions, or households? And also, what are the most cost-effective ways of delivering those transfers? I'm pleased today to welcome two speakers who can help answer those questions. Annalisa Conte is Deputy Director of Policy Program and Innovation Division at the United Nations World Food Program. And John Hodnott is Deputy Director in the Poverty, Health, and Nutrition Division at IFPRI. Between 2010 and 2013, IFPRI and the World Food Program collaborated on a study examining the impact of cash, food, or vouchers on household food security in Ecuador, Uganda, Niger, and Yemen. This evaluation was the largest, most rigorous ever undertaken on this issue. A number of key lessons on type and cost effectiveness of transfer modality emerged from the study, but I leave it to our two speakers to elaborate further. First up is Annalisa Conte, who will provide some WFP perspectives on this work. Thank you, and uh, good afternoon to everybody, and uh, thank you to IFPRI to host this event this afternoon. Over the past, uh, uh, the last decade, uh, we have seen uh, a rapid evolution of the international food assistance. In uh, 2000, uh, for the first time, uh, emergency delivers uh, accounted for the majority of food aid. In the meantime, further integration of local markets uh, into commercial uh, networks gave the possibility uh, to humanitarian uh, organization uh, to use market-based uh, interventions, market-based responses, also in emergencies. <coughs> the post-tsunami success successful application of cash and voucher encouraged the further expansion, sometimes also underestimating the limits of uh, small and immature markets, but uh, an expansion toward market-based uh, intervention. In 2007-2008, in order to respond to the global high food, uh, high food prices, uh, even the world's largest uh, food aid donor, USA, experimented the use of market-based intervention uh, mainly local and regional procurement, uh, but also cash and voucher transfer. According to WFP statistics, the uh, local and regional procurement uh, grew from 11% in 1999 <laughs> to 67% in 2010. The International Food Assistance Toolbox has really expanded from a sort of a one-size-fits-all transoceanic in-kind delivery of food to multiple tools. This expansion, of course, calls for a new analytical capacities, mechanisms, tools to help decision makers uh, identify the most appropriate uh, and context-specific uh, transfer modality. Several donors uh, and practitioners uh, show clear preference for market-based uh, options cash and voucher in particular, whereas there are others uh, that they are more cautious sometimes skeptical. They argue about the quality of food that we can find on local markets. They argue about the possibility to misuse cash or vouchers. But I guess that the bottom line is that we know relatively well, or perhaps even quite well, what we can expect from in-kind, whereas we still don't know enough 
about uh, what can be the impact of uh, market-based interventions and in particular cash and voucher transfers. So on the one hand, there is the need to, man to manage both unreasonable expectations of these tools as well as unreasonable skepticism toward these tools. Cash and voucher may perform better than the very traditional transoceanic food aid, <laughs> but we have also to acknowledge that uh, trades off uh, are to be expecting, expected also when we use market-based interventions. It is clear that uh, a rapid growth of the food assistance toolbox uh, has to catch up uh, with the evaluation of their impact. And the studies uh, that were carried out by IFPRI in collaboration with WFP are meant precisely to shed more light on what we should or we should not expect. It is a contribution to the wider community of practice and definitely a step forward for WFP uh, to be better uh, prepared to be more knowledgeable and uh, uh, in, in the selection of the appropriate transfer modality according to the context uh, and based on the objective of our intervention. And with this, I would like uh, to pass the floor to John for the presentation. Thank you. <laughs>